If I look back at everything I've learned in school, there's only one thing that has really been valuable, and that's the skill of speaking and writing in English. But the other day, I found an English project that I had done back in school, and I looked at the writing like this. The people writing this noticed this and thought they would inform others about the matter. Change is not always a good thing in the way that it can that the diversity of the English language can make the general group of the English speaking society possibly miscommunicate miscommunicate or misunderstand each other. I don't even understand what I'm writing here. What I realized is that the English I spoke back in school is totally different to the English I'm speaking now and writing now, now when I'm running a multi-million dollar business. So without actually realizing I have unlearned what I actually learned in school. And that's what this video is about. Because I remember when I was starting out that I actually had almost to speak a different type of English in order to land clients, do well in sales, and make my first money online. And they kind of lied to us. We got graded on this, how complicated the language could be, what fancy words we could add circumstances, constantly changing words, phrases. I don't even understand what I'm writing in this sentence. So maybe I've just gotten more stupid. I don't know. But now I'm also making a shit ton of more money. The crazy thing is that in school we were graded about how complicated we could make things seem. When in reality, and that's the entire point of this video, if you take one thing away from this video, it's that instead of making things complicated, you should make them as simple as possible. And that might sound easy, but it's actually one of the hardest skills that you can learn. How can you take something that might be complicated or might have a lot of complexity to it and then make it as simple as possible? That's what we're gonna talk about in this video. Because the reality is that 50% of the US read under a grade six level. Think about that. This means that when you are writing ads or you are writing scripts for content or you're writing emails, if you write something that is over grade six, then most of the US wouldn't like to read it. They wouldn't be able to read it very quickly. They would need to use a lot of brain capacity to understand what you are actually writing. And people really don't understand this in business. If I head into my email, you can see one of the code emails that I received. And if I take this email right here and I insert it into a tool, and this tool is very valuable, so you should definitely start using that. If I insert it into the Hemingway app, this basically analyzes the readability of the email. And what do you see right here? This email has postgraduate readability postgraduate. I don't understand this shit. Even for me, it would take a lot of brain power to read this email right here. And that's what people don't understand. They try to sound smart and not make things simple so people actually understand them. So how do you actually fix the readability of an email? Let me give you a couple of tips. First tip is to use easier words. By using easier words, it will literally just be easier to understand. Step two, structure your sentences so that they make sense. Don't use too many commas or too many like weird, I don't even know what this thing is. Don't use that. Use dots only and make short, concise, simple sentences because those are by far the easiest to read. And tip number three, use chat GPT. I can take this postgraduate message right here. I can head over to ChatGPT. I can give it this and I can ask it, please make this grade six reading level. And ChatGPT knows what a grade six reading level is. And now you can see it's much easier to understand. And if I take this now, insert it back into reading level, you can see now it's grade seven, which is clo close enough. To make it even easier to read, you can do this, and instead of this weird AI dash, you can just create dots. The Hemingway app is a really genius tool because you can insert text and you can actually work with it and see that it becomes easier and easier to read. And you might think, well, if I do these three things, 
I'm not gonna sound smart. And that's what I used to think as well. But the reality of it is, if you're creating things like ads, like cold emails, like scripts, like anything really, we live in a world where attention is so valuable. When you make an ad on social media, they make the buying decision right there and then if they're even gonna read your ad from the headline. If you have a very overcomplicated headline, people are just gonna scroll past it on social media. Same for cold emails, same even for scripts. If I start a video by saying something that's really, really complicated that you don't even understand, you're just gonna find a new video. So it's not a problem of sounding smart. You wanna sound clear. A really good example is Hamosi's $100 million books. Alex Hamosi has literally said it himself that he's doing this on a grade, I think, five, and that he also speaks at a grade five reading level. What does this mean? Well, it means that almost everyone in the US can read his books. His entire thing is to take something that's very complicated business and make it very, very simple and define things to make them clear and understandable. And that's why he's so successful. And that's also why you could give his book to a grade five student and they would understand what the sentences mean. And do you really think that Alex Hamosi doesn't sound smart? I think that makes him sound even more smart. So really understand how you make things clear. Do that by using Hemiway app. Another great tip is that you can use X or Twitter because here you're forced to write something and concise it a lot. If you go to my Twitter, for example, and take this one thing right here and give it to Hemingway app, you can see this is literally grade zero. This is so easy to read that anyone can understand it. Same with another tweet right here. Also grade zero. Twitter is an extremely good way of learning how to write concise and simple words because there's a lot of text on Twitter. If I go to my feed, I'm gonna stop and scroll and if things sound too complicated, I'm just gonna scroll, scroll past. Definitely a good tip as well to learn it because something magical happens when you understand how to write clearly. When you combine this with basic human psychology of understanding how people think, you become an absolute weapon. This is how to make people do exactly what you want. The first step is the one that we already talked about, which is that you wanna write in a clear language that people understand. People won't do whatever you want them to do if they don't understand what it is that you actually want. You need to write in a clear, concise language exactly like we talked about before. Step two is from a book called How to Win Friends and Influence People. Definitely a must read if you haven't read it already. And it's literally just a very simple principle, which is literally just think from other people's perspective. I see a lot of beginners in the business space make the mistake of always thinking about themselves. I get a lot of DMs on Instagram, people saying, please help me, please I'll work for free. Please just do something because I'm in a tough situation. What people are doing there is that they're only thinking about themselves. The reality is that everyone, and this is literally every person on earth, are thinking about themselves first. So if you're in a disagreement with someone or literally just on a sales call, you always want to mention the things that make sense for them. First step is always to mention things that benefits them. Give them a compliment. Say something nice about them. Talk about how the thing that you're doing could help them. And then you mention what you need. Let me give you an example. If you have an angry email in your support email, someone that says that they didn't feel like they got the right service or something is wrong. What a lot of beginners will do is that they will start oh, you didn't do this, you didn't do this. They'll start by blaming them or by instantly coming up with an excuse. But the best format to handle any angry customers is always agreeing, saying something that benefits them or make them feel good because people really only care about themselves. So you mention something that would make them feel better. I totally agree with you. Or you can also give them a compliment. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to make me aware of this issue. You say something positive in the start. Don't say, well, well, you could have done this or you could have done that instantly because that's only gonna escalate the situation further. By using the them and then you format, you can literally handle so many situations that otherwise would be very hard to handle. You agree with them, you can say, I totally agree. Then after you've agreed with them, you've kind of like, Fix the situation just a little bit. Always start with praise is another saying. If you're giving someone some feedback, always start with praise what they did good and then say, well, next time we could also try and do this. That way you don't 
blame them. So start with praise, start with something positive about them, and then handle the situation. Say that it looks like you missed a bill and that's why we stopped the subscription. Say whatever the cause was to this angry email and then fix the situation. And the funny thing is that this is not only something that you can use in business, you can use it in any argument really that you have, also with your girlfriend or with your parents, wherever. If you always start every single conversation by thinking about, okay, their situation right now, what, what would they like to hear? Mentioning that first or saying thank you first or agreeing with them first and then coming with your point will always give you way better results than instantly handling from the situation or blaming them or doing something. And I literally always use this and it doesn't matter if I'm talking to my girlfriend, if I'm talking to my team members, if I'm talking to an angry customer on the email, I always use this format, even on text. Look at, look at this. If I have some constructive feedback to a team member, I always start with praise, like nice work, my man. And then this we could do even better. It's much better than just writing this only because people are not gonna feel appreciated. And you might say, well, Albert, is that not manipulation? And that really depends on how you look at manipulation. I think that this is literally just a better way of speaking to everyone in your life and the positive thing is that you are going to get better results as well. Your team members will like you more if you praise them first. People in your support are going to like you more and they're not going to leave negative reviews if you praise them first or if you agree with them first or if you thank them first for bringing this to your attention. Always start with praise. Think about it from their perspective first before you write anything else, before you give criticism, before you mention your point in the discussion. It doesn't matter. If you learn to do these two things, speak and write in a clear language that people understand, and you learn to think from other people's point of view, and you always mention the thing that they want to hear first, you will come so far in business. This is literally enough people skills to make your first million dollars online. If you really understand this, then you don't need to read any 48 laws of power this will be enough people skills, enough psychology understanding to get people to do what you want. And I think it's such an important skill because it's not something that they teach you in school. They actually teach you the opposite. They teach you to write in an unclear language, in the hardest, most complicated, most comprehensive language possible. Understand that you need to unlearn all of that in order to create good ads, emails, scripts, really anything. This video was a bit different than what I usually do. Usually we talk about AI agents, how to sell them, how to build them. If you want a completely free guide for how to do that, then we have our completely free school community that has 107,000 members. Inside of Classroom, you have the three day challenge that takes you from an absolute beginner to a pro with AI agents. As always, have a wonderful rest of the day.